This is the perfect example as to why they are creating this hysterical nothing over CRT. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones was one of the bullies trying to stop his black classmates from desegregating a high school in Little Rock in 1957. But nonetheless, the high school was in Little Rock and somebody took the time to analyze all of these angry, hateful, racist faces and said, that looks like Jerry Jones, the owner of the cowboy. Man, you can't make this shit up, man. All right, we, we got to talk about this Jerry Jones situation. So you're going to want to watch this video all the way through as I have several different videos to get my point across. But as usual, the woke ideologues, the black KKK collective groupthink, they're at their anti-white selective outrage push once again in this country. Uh, basically, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, he, Washington Post put out a hit job article on him trying to cancel him. They went and dug up an old picture of him uh, during a historical moment, uh, a picture that is 65 years old, uh, putting the man at, I believe, the age of 14. Um, this is Jerry Jones was spotted in a 1957 photo showing him among a crowd of white students trying to block uh, desegregation efforts. This was around Little Ark, um, Little Ark uh, High School during a time, a historical time, when they were going through desegregation. Now, since then, Jerry Jones has came out and, and spoke about the photo, and he confirmed that it's him, uh, and he gave his explanation. He said that he was a curious kid, uh, and if we look at the photo, he looked curious. He just was a, a, a bystander standing there looking. Washington Post this week unearthed a photo showing a 14-year-old Jones in the back of the crowd of white students that was blocking black students from entering a Little Rock, Arkansas high school. Fox 4 Stephen Dial joins us with the story. Stephen. Yeah, a quick search of Cowboys owners named Jerry Jones on Twitter, and you'll see that has been debated for days. A lot of people picking different sides about that photo from 1957, where white students were blocking black students from entering a school in Little Rock, Arkansas. Today, a member of the Little Rock Nine reacted to Jerry Jones's comments. Well, that was 65 years ago, and uh, I had no idea I would have walked up there what we were doing. And um, uh, uh, it um, uh, just is a reminder to me of uh, how to uh, uh, improve and do things the right way. Following the Cowboys' Thanksgiving Day win over the Giants, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones was peppered with questions about this photo. It's from 1957, when Jones was 14 years old. The picture captured the moment a crowd of white students attempted to deny access to six black students at North Little Rock High School. Any regrets on being in the photo, being there at all? Well, I didn't. I wouldn't uh, have just dug that up for sure. I mean, seriously, but uh, uh, that was curiously. Uh, uh, I got criticized because I was more interested in how I was going to be punished by my coaches and everybody for uh, being out front. Jones told reporters as a high school sophomore he was a spectator and didn't know the gravity of what was going on. It was Jones's first time in front of the media since the photo surfaced earlier this week in a lengthy Washington Post story contending that Jones had not done enough to promote African-Americans in positions of power in his organization. And, you know, he claimed to say he didn't really know what was going on. You know, I'm not here to make excuses or, or put myself into what he was thinking or what he knew then. I don't buy that he just was completely oblivious to what was going on. But I do, uh, uh, I do, um, I will accept the fact that he says that, you know, he was just, uh, you know, a kid at the time standing by curiously looking at what's going on. In the photo, you can clearly see that he's not showing any type of animosity or anything. But, you know, it, it, here we are now. We got the left. And, uh, you know, they're 
showing animosity and trying to cancel Jerry Jones. A photo from 1957 of Cowboy's billion dollar owner, Jerry Jones, stopping black classmates from desegregating his high school has surfaced. Why is this a huge deal? Because there's a lack of minority hires amongst the NFL. Many people say that owners are racist. I do not believe that owners are racist, but I do believe that owners are racially insensitive, racially ignorant, and have a definite racial preference based upon their history. Jerry Jones, last time I checked, has made 37 coaching hires, head coach, offensive, defensive coordinators. Only four of those have been black. I don't think that's a coincidence. Think about this. Jerry Jones was a captain of an Arkansas football team in 1968. That team was not integrated. And now a photo from 1957 has surfaced to where Jerry Jones has stopped the integration or at least tried to stop the integration of his own high school? You all, this is no small deal. The lack of minority hires because the people at the top, the owners, aren't diverse. But not only that, they have no diverse thought. Completely disregard everything else that he's done, like how many black men within his organization that he made multi-millionaires, how many black men that he's changed their life change their family's life, change their community's life, right? So, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a Cowboys fan. I'm not so per se a Jerry Jones fan. Um, I don't really have too much sentiments, you know, compassion for him because he did at one time bow down and kneel to the woke ideologues by kneeling during the national anthem. The Dallas Cowboys taking their stand by taking a knee before the national anthem team owner, Jerry Jones, right in the middle. At first, he was very opposed to it, but now, you know, eventually he broke down. He need with the rest of his team. So I, it's the same thing as we've been saying. You go woke, you go broke. This is what happens when you bend the knee, you apologize, and you, you cave to the mob. And that's what Jerry Jones did, and now it's coming back to bite him. But for me, what pisses me off about this whole situation and what I always say about black people in this country is they have anger, hatred, and resentment in their heart. No logical person in their right mind can hold a grudge or try to prosecute someone for something 65 years ago when they were a teenager. You know, it's, it's these same people with this selective outrage that are upset and mad like Charlemagne the devil. Now, you are a Cowboys fan, right? Yes, sir. So I'm sure you pay attention I'm, to storylines. I'm a fan man. of the most racist racist owner in the whole league. Did you see that he brought the whole team to the African American Museum of Washington yesterday? I did see that. Does that earn that's him any points? That's posturing. Nah, that's just all posturing. That's all that is. And this Emmanuel guy that doesn't speak for me, I don't know what black people he speaks for. He's only speaking for himself and those that think like him that are outraged and show selective outrage towards Jerry Jones being in this old picture. But these are the same people that literally advocated for a real segregationist. What's less known is how he followed the lead of some of the Senate's most fervent segregationists. In a series of never before published letters reviewed by CNN, the strength of Biden's opposition to busing comes into sharper focus. On March 25th, 1977, Biden wrote, my bill strikes at the heart of the injustice of court ordered busing. It prohibits the federal courts from disrupting our educational system. Biden sought and received support from Mississippi Senator James Eastland, the Democratic chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a leading symbol of Southern resistance to desegregation. He frequently spoke of blacks as quote, an inferior race. Biden reflected on that era earlier this year. There are a bunch of racists. You know, there was, you know, James O. East of Mississippi, Strom Thurmond, and so on. Uh, there were nine guys in, who were in the caucus that were, you know, I ran against in the civil rights movement. But he did not say that Eastland and others were partners on several of Biden's anti-busing bills. On June 30th, 1977, Biden wrote, Dear Mr. Chairman, I want you to know that I very much appreciate your help during this week's committee meeting in attempting to bring my anti-busing legislation to a vote. Then in 1978, Biden again asked Eastland to put his anti-busing bill before the full Senate, writing, Your participation in floor debate would be welcome. These are the same people that advocated for the Democratic Party, the party that is for the KKK, the party that started the KKK, the party that started Jim Crow. I mean, the list goes on. These are the same people that advocated for Jim Crow Joe Biden. Yeah, the same guy that said that he don't want his kids growing up in a racial jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the same people that advocated for Joe Biden that passed the 94 crime bill that disproportionately locked up a lot of people in this country and was unapologetic about it until the mob pressures 
got Troy and he had to pander to them with the, some form of an apology. This is the same people that advocated to put Joe Biden in the office. The same guy that said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. These are the same people with their anti-white anger, hatred, and resentment that helped put Joe Biden, the man that did a eulogy for a KKK recruiter, Robert Byrd, that said that it was his mentor, his leader, his friend, and his guide. As also noted, Robert C. Byrd was a parliamentary library, a keeper of the institution of the Senate, and he was the institution itself. But to me, and many people here today, like guys I see, Bill Bradley and Jim Sasser, who long left the Senate for greener pastures, and I hope better remuneration. We used to kid about that too, but I, uh, for a lot of us, he was a friend, and he was a mentor, and he was a guy. And Stephen A. Smith, I never thought that I would say it, but for the first time, Stephen A. Smith got a W in a long time because he's been woke they woke, woke, woke. But when it came to this Jerry Jones situation, he expressed that Jerry Jones is a good friend of his and that this is wrong. For the first time, I shared the same sentiments with Stephen A. Smith, and he was dead on point. He was right. He hit the nail on the head. I'm pretty pissed off. And let me say this. <clears throat> I'm pissed off, but not for reasons that people would think. I'm very, very fond of Jerry Jones, and I'm not hiding that from anybody. Is his record perfect? No. But I'm pissed off because he doesn't deserve what just happened. He doesn't deserve it. One report, our report, said he was 14 years old. Yeah. Another report said he was 15 years old. At minimum, that's 65 years ago. You're going to bring up a picture of Jerry Jones standing at this protest. No question what was happening is not something that anybody as a black person should be appreciative about. We had six students at that particular North Little Rock High School that was trying to desegregate the school. No one should it be was, okay it, with it, it. Nobody should be okay with that. Regardless of We race. understand that. We get all of that. We also understand what we as black people and as black folks, black men have to deal with. And by the way, to some degree, we still deal with a lot of things and we all know it. Mm -hmm. Racism is alive and well. Bigotry and prejudice is alive and well. We get all of that. But you gonna bring up a photo of him yeah. when he was 14, 15 years old? 65 or 66 years ago. We this is this is where cancer culture gets into the mix and you're making an attempt to eradicate him what he stands for and all he has done. And by the way, I don't have a problem with the photo. Yeah. I don't have a problem if he was 30, 35, 40 years old, that's different. Right. 14, 15 years old. 14, 15 years old. Right. But we're going to lean on somebody when he was 14 Born and raised in the South, and we're going to pick it up 66 years <laughs> later to say, you know something? Yeah. You ain't hire a black coach. I think that's pretty low. I really, really do. I think, that's, I think that part is pretty low. If he were an adult, yeah. that would be different. But a 14, 15-year-old yeah. kid raised in the South who literally is just standing there yeah. looking, and we use that. To bring up in the year 2022. Oh, this is where you are. You got to explain this. You ready to explain what you did when you were 14? Let the first person cast the stone that is without sin. A lot of these people that's digging into the background of people and trying to prosecute them for stuff that happened 65 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Maybe we need to dig in to look deeper into their life. You know, it's sad, man. Booker T. Washington, Thomas Sowell, racism is on life support. But there is, unfortunately, people that are trying to keep it alive. They have a high demand of racism, but such low supply. It's true, man. There is a certain class of people that are just trying to keep this going. This is ridiculous, man. These white supremacists, these racist 
these people full of demonic hate. There's pictures of some of the things that they did and they don't want their children and grandchildren to come across situations like this where they are exposed for their violent racist past. All I have to say at this point is let the exposing continue. So I, I want you to put in the comments what your thoughts are. I'm not gonna make the video long. If it's your first time on my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell so you can get notified every time I put out a new video. Everybody else that's been supporting me, you guys know my voice would not be elevated to where it is today if it wasn't for you. Simply just viewing the video, liking, commenting, and sharing it. In the words of Larry Elder, we got a country to save. It's your boy, the mean tweet master, Craig Long 45. You can't make this shit up. I'm out. Peace. Yeah, wait. <laughs>